is Richard Wilson of Mad Shelley Films, and you're listening to Inspirado Projecto Radio. This is great. But all the stuff you just mentioned, all great, great music, man. Oh, yeah. Yep. So, Sam, so where are you playing tonight? Uh, tonight we're playing at the Canyon in Santa Clarita. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. Who are some of your influences? That's so hard, man. Well, who, so, who really inspires you? Who, like, who, who uh, do you find yourself... I was just listening to the band Keen, you know? Have you ever heard Keen? Oh, yeah, Keen, yeah, yeah. I was really listening to them. I love them. Depeche Mode. Oh, yeah. Jim Croce. Oh, yeah. I mean, everyone you're mentioning, Peter Gabriel. Yeah. Me, it just goes on. There's just authenticity in that stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yep. This is good music. Do you, do you have this on uh, Spotify yeah. or yep. what's what's the name of this song? Uh, well, the record's called, it's called Matter of Time. Matter of Time. A Matter of Time, yeah. The and then, record's called A Matter of Time. It's seven songs. And then the, and then it's Matthew James. Yeah, is your one, name? Yeah, one T. Oh, that's cool. Yep. So is this is this an entire album? Yeah. And then how long did it take for you to make this? Oh man, well about six months. Oh, that's cool. Six to eight months. What kind I recorded of... with a guy out here, Sherman Oaks. Oh, that's he's great. Trey Hartman, yeah. Uh, he's got it, and he, he's been he's been an engineer for years. Um, producer, and he he made his, he built a studio at his house. The sound quality on this is oh, great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's all nothing left, nothing digital. You, you know, all drums and everything's. Oh, cool. Everything's real. Live. Wait, so you recorded it? What? What on a on on um... Pro Tools? Oh, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Oh, I see. So the drums are not uh, digital. No. These are real drums played. Cool. Did you do all these instruments? No, I don't play. No. My buddy out here played drums. Uh, I played all the guitars, did all the vocals. That's great. And then the guy that produced it did the bass, played bass. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, yeah. And he gave me a great deal. I mean, I recorded this whole record for two grand. That's awesome. Got lucky. This song, it's great. It has like a journey kind of, not not journey the band, but a, like a quest kind of sound to it. Yeah, all these do. All these songs have that atmospheric oh, kind of. Oh, that's great. Kind of, it reflected, you know. Oh, that's cool. Like the lone, the lone reflective traveler, the philosopher who's out there uh, in the plains trying to make sense of it all. Yeah, that's how you roll. That's how. What do you play? Bass. Uh, uh, guitars, and I'm behind the keys, and okay. then we got a saxophone player and bassist and. Um, uh, percussionist, singer. Uh, so there's seven of us in the band. Oh, fun, man. Um, what, where, what kind of, where have you been playing? Have you been playing places? Yeah, well, my mom passed away like a year ago. I'm sorry to hear that. So I kind of took time off for a while. Uh-huh. And actually, it was right when this record came out when she passed. So the record is, so now I'm just back in it. But I'm in Hotel Cafe. And Molly, oh, that's Mal- great. Molly Malone's and... Wherever, you know, just around. There are all kinds of places yeah, these days. LA, yeah, man. I really want to get out and play, you know. That's where the key is. But, I mean, I'm always, you know, all these open mic circles, you know, when you're here long enough, you just, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, all over LA, man. I was just at Kulak. Have you ever been to Kulak's? You know what? That was one of the first places I went to because I used to host a lot of open mics back uh, yeah. back in Chicago. And, Such um, a great little place. So when I came out here, I started going to all these open mics. And Kulak's, I couldn't quite figure out what kind of place that was. How do they even survive? They just survive on donations all, or what? Yeah, all donations and then $20 for videos. They, have you seen the quality of those videos, though? No. No. I don't think they had those when I when I oh, first yeah, started going out there. What the heck the is place. What the heck so is that? you pay that? $20, right? You pay 20 bucks at every open mic. And most people do, and then they do video. It's like, I mean, it's like five angles, like real video. Wait, real, uh, of the open mic? Yeah. Oh my God, that's awesome. Yeah. That is brilliant. I mean, so check this out. I mean, for 20 bucks a switch. What the video. heck? Yeah. So you get basically a music video. I mean, they'll, so they're right there with all the cameras. They, and, and then, oh, we, and then they, they edit it? For 20 bucks. I mean, yeah. I mean, look you gotta at be the kidding quality, me. Look at the quality of that. You gotta be kidding me. Yeah. This looks like something like on frickin' VH1 uh, yeah. One Storytellers or something. Yep. So I've been no there. way. Oh, yeah, left here. Yeah, yeah, this little nugget. This cool. is great, man. Yeah. Man, that looks great. I know. So that's wow, how they, that's Kulak's how Woodshed. That's so cool that that place is still around. Yeah, I've been going there. I, it's funny because I've been there like two weeks in a row. And it's all built-in crowd. 
and, and, and everyone that works there, and they're all older and just so cool. What, you know what, that reminds me of, there's this place that I found called Sunland Sunspace. Have you ever heard of that place? Uh, Sunland Sunspace, it's got a very home vibe. Yeah. They're um, basically built as a community theater. They always have these uh, really awesome sort of, um, you gotta let them know if you wanna play that night, but they're called Unusual Tuesdays. And they are just so awesome and surreal and uh, just such a fun, such a fun Where's experience. That uh, that's in basically in Shadow Hills and Sunland, right on the corner of it. Oh, okay. And so it's called Sunland Sunspace, and uh, which I just think is so great because there it is in, in Shadow Hills. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Those Sunland. Those are the best communities, though, man. Yeah. It's like the bars get kind of old after a while. I mean, they have their time and place, but oh it's yeah, nice to hang out somewhere and just feel the like, family-run stuff. Yeah, it's just yeah. so I mean, cool in the community. Like, they have like drink coffee and like. Eat you know, I don't know. Man, I gotta go out to Kulak sometime. Yeah, I gotta check it out. Well, thank you so much, yeah, man. It was name, a pleasure. Man? Oh, I'm Kurt, but I go as uh, Stony Shores in the band. Okay, Kurt. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, you take care. It was a pleasure meeting you. We are here, Santa Clarita Canyon. I still haven't figured it out. I still, have you, did you see him out there in the audience when you were playing? Oh yeah, oh yeah, he's... Oh yeah, you saw him on the dance floor. Oh my god, yeah. I still haven't figured it out. I still haven't figured it out. And then he just grabs it. And then he just grabs it. Oh yeah. He reaches it out of this guy and then he flings it around. I don't know how he controls that thing. I still haven't figured it out. That is the one hand and clap. One hand clap. <coughs> the one handed clapping audience. You could actually get twice as much claps out of that. If you got two hands, one hand clapping. Two one hand clappings. Two one handed clappers. Wait. Two hands, one clapping. I haven't tried it years. Me no. So we're here at the canyon tonight. Uh, we have the spirits of Jimi Hendrix smiling at us from the walls. We've got all these uh, signed guitars, which, by the way, I bet you if we signed a Yachtly Crew guitar, would they put it up on the wall? This would be a good spot for that. Oh, yeah, perfect. In a, in a high prominent location. Now. Yeah, near the, near the right big there. seat. Oh, oh. The the oh, yeah, that space. would be great. Hey, Chaz, what are your thoughts about us giving these guys one of those signed guitars? Because this is a perfect place for them to hang them. Yachtly Crew signed guitar? Dude, wouldn't that be right? Um, putting it up there with all the greats, with all their autographs on the walls. I mean, you never know. You never know. Sir, so are you, uh, Brother Shores? Are you rested up enough for the next three days? I have done my due diligence in. Catching my REMs, yes. Good. Did you, uh, that's why you're a shiny, happy person. That's why I'm shiny, happy people, yes. Did, uh, okay, so I noticed the pipe cleaners here. Mm-hmm. And can you please tell, tell the at-home viewers the story that you told me earlier concerning sand? Um, well, sand apparently has a, um, a um, scientific... There's there's some very advanced. Um, well, basically, spit and sand don't mix, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. especially when uh, dealing with a, uh, a woodwind instrument. Ah. There's crevices and and places that the sand can get in places where it's not never meant to be. Mm. Kind of like if you take your two year old to the beach mm-hmm. and they're wearing a dirty diaper. Yeah, it's kind of like Uh-oh. the sand gets in places where yeah. you don't want that diaper to be all you know, rubbing up against you, places it shouldn't be. Yeah. Same thing on the saxophone, you know. Take a big breath and you go to blow a note and it doesn't come out. It's like dirty diapers. So So you got the sand in the saxophone. Yes, it was a very sandy saxophone. What day was that? Uh, We played at the Jonathan Club last Tuesday the 3rd. Yep. And Uh, the saxophone was outside while we were in the green room, huh? Yes, it was. 
and the wind blew, uh, blew kicked up the sand. And we also played a surf rodeo back in June mm. too. So, and I never had it looked at since then. Okay, so true. I'm sure sand was lingering in my case. I left my case in the sand. Sand got in the case of my saxophone. So, what did you really notice in terms of how, what the sand did to the saxophone? Yeah. Uh, it wasn't this particular one I'm holding. Is the alto, the one that had the most, that had the majority of the problems, was the tenor sax. It wouldn't play because the, the 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 metal. The metal thing that comes up when you press a button on the saxophone is called a pad. Mm. That pad has to go down straight over the hole without making this boring for radio land. There will be no air. You have to have a suction for there uh-huh. to be a sound. Oh, wait, I can demonstrate. Oh, good. So here's a saxophone that has all its suction happening. That's the lowest note on oh, the Oh, that's alto good. Sax. So on the alto sax, if you play that and you have a leaky key, it'll sound like. Oh! It won't come out. The air won't oh. go past the leak. So, so the sand particles, even it's kind of kicking open the door. It's like a little kickstand that's kind of like keeping that door open just a tiny yep. smidge, just yep. enough for it to not yep. do what it's supposed to do. And here's a trick, too. I, I find I do this before I play. This will translate nicely over your microphone, I think. This is uh, how I make sure this is seal in my mouthpiece. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, the, the saxophone is made with the, much like the physics, the, the, the way your vocal cords work. They mm-hmm. vibrate. If you put your hand, if you can do this in radio lands, you put your hand on your neck mm-hmm. and like speak uh, the lowest uh, tones you can. Uh, you can feel the rubber you can even, band like, go going. up and down. Uh, you can feel the rubber band going. Yeah, there's vibration in your vocal cords. So the way that you get, this is the sound of me tapping the, the bamboo reed uh, with my finger. This bamboo reed vibrates oh, yeah. uh, thousands of times a, a second to get a sound. And can't get the sound unless there's suction. So I do this mouthpiece check where I suck out all the air. And you can hear the reed pop. That's actually, there you go. Oh, so oh. That's, there it goes. Oh. That's the sound of the suction being released from my mouthpiece. Now I can do that with my neck too. I put, there's a curved part of the saxophone that you connect to the instrument. It makes this kind of sound. Same thing. See? Oh. That's on the neck. So now I know there's suction between, oh, sorry, between the, the, the mouthpiece and the neck. So then the next, the next way to tell if there's any leaks is to just play the lowest note. Is it? I couldn't play that if there was a leak. Is it more difficult to to hear the difference if you're playing a higher note? Like in other words, is there more more value in your brain in playing the lower note to give it a test? Rather than a higher note. Yeah. And what do you because, find is the difference? Because you can play higher notes uh, even if there's a leak. Oh. Oh. There because we go. you're not pressing the keys down. Oh. The lowest note. Yeah, it's like note. It's like the trombone. The tube. The tube is longer, but the tube doesn't get longer. The trombone, you pull the slide out and it gets longer. Oh. The saxophone tube is all the holes going down to the very. So the air is only coming out the bell. Otherwise, the sound's coming from up here, and it doesn't matter if these if there's a leak. So, okay, so when you went to get it repaired, what exactly did they do? He took off the keys, he removed the pads, he heated it up, uh, got the shellac to melt, and took, the, took off the old leather pad, and then got a new fresh pad, put a new resonator on it. He put a new resonator on it, and then... Uh, and then uh, put shellac on the on the leather pad and hammered it into the cup of the key, and then uh, put it back on the instrument. Screwed in the, the attachment screw, and uh, and did that for three different keys. Astounding, ladies and gentlemen. We will get back to more of this later because we're about to uh, do a sound check here. We'll uh, we'll talk more later. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, go. All right. Hold on. Maybe the tiny one starts off the, the no, song. No, no. And that one is the end. That, that. Okay. Oh, wait, it starts us off. Like that starts it off, and then that's the end of it. The big gong one. Okay, yeah, ready? Okay, let's try it. You gotta do it. Let it go first. Yeah. Okay. Inspirado Projecto. <laughs> <laughs> Inspirado Projecto. Yes. That's perfect. It's like a Inspirado Projecto. <laughs> yeah. I heard you go. Yeah. 
a cacophony oh, of different, man. different uh, oh. bell sounds. Oh, oh my god, that's great! The freaking yeah, yeah, that's get great. Down, get it's down. like a, yeah, be lit, be lit. Get Inspirado Projecto. Let the games begin. Can you dig it? That was funny. That was awesome. That all, it sounded like it had power behind it, like a fierce wind. Maybe that's what the gong sound is supposed to symbolize, like a fierce wind. Oh. Ooh. Inspirado Projecto. Projecto. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one too. Inspirado Projecto. Inspirado Projecto. I love the experimentation of it. Ooh, that's good. Inspirado Projecto. Oh, that's got quite a reverb on it. That's good. It just keeps going and going. Yeah. I just imagine someone's at the Grand Canyon and they hit that gong and it just keeps going. Inspirado. Projecto. Oh, that's good. Wow. Wow, that's good. Inspirado. Projecto. <laughs> This is like a Tom York dream. Projecto, 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 Inspirado. Oh, that's good. Wow. A low gong. Oh, that's good. Dinner time. Inspirado Projecto. <laughs> it's the consistently morphing pizza. Oh, man. What are we watching? How about Inspirado Projecto. <laughs> Tell me something, girl. Baby. Baby. Tell me all about your favorite get show. Get down, get down, get, 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 get down, get down, get down, get down, get down. Got to get down. Now, 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 now. Do you do that song? You play that song? You play on the sax? Yeah. Jungle Boogie. Walking down the corner. Beedaloo, beedaloo. Boom, bop. Alright, let's go ahead and watch the opening band. Let's do it. I let us do it. Let's go. Now, let us do it now. Thank you for the commun- community. Get down. Get down. Get down. Get They're actually quite good. And for like a cover band, I think I had misgivings about going. Uh-huh. But once I was here, they're actually really, really talented, and I had a really good time, and that's why I'm back. Oh my god, that's so great! Yeah. What, what was the first uh, show that you saw, Yachtly Crew? In December, I think December twentieth here, and so now I returned this time. And typically, I don't. I don't typically go out on a Fridays, like Friday after work, uh-huh, right? Because uh-huh. I'm done. But made an exception for this. Oh, this is so was, cool! No, but I had a really good time. I'm so glad to hear and that. And they're very talented. Oh, that is so great to yeah, hear. That yeah, is so yeah. cool. Was, are, are the, a lot of these songs, uh, you know, they must be familiar to you. you yeah, most of them, most, most in your of heart, them are, and the good ones. And the good ones that, that you remember as well, because not all of the 80s, as we know, not all of them were good. Well, what, were some of your, what are some of your favorite songs that are played that you go, oh my gosh, wait, that one? That's uh, so cool. there, was a, there was a request to tonight, yeah. I don't recall right now. But I know Robert is a super fan of Yachtly Crew, and he's inside. Oh, that's great. But he is, if you want to interview someone, Robert yeah. is the person because he is a Yachtly Crew. Oh, that'd be good. Fanatic, and that'd he had his own little prayer tonight of what song would be sung. Oh my god! So we gosh. took a moment of silence in the car, or we tried to. Oh, wow, I love it. And tried to have oh, that song that. to that's, have that song done. I love hearing that you're saying that yes. right now. That you took that moment to really yes. put that vibe out there. 
for, for Robert. Oh my gosh, for that Robert is so and his great. and his love for Yali. Crew. I love it. That so, is so cool to yeah. hear. So meet us inside. We'll buy you a drink. That's fantastic. And we'll meet you on the dance floor. Oh, I love it. Oh, All that's right. great. Very good. What's your name? Monica. Oh my gosh, it's so nice to meet it's you. Nice. What's your name? Oh, it's Stony Shores. Stony Shores. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Is that your real name? <laughs> no. Okay. Happy parents. Just curious. Yeah. You take care. Quick riff here. At Bum bum ba dum gum ba do dum bum 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 ba dum bum ba go dum bounce on the bank and jump down the ba dum gum ba the bum ba down now ba da dum bum ba the dum ba dum gum ba da dum she been the dum to sound fall for two dum bounce on the bum ba down bum ba da dum can't work out the sound count ba da dum. Um, what do you think is your favorite part about drinking coffee? Do you I like? Just love the taste of it. Yeah. The, and I've recently taste. gotten to where I'll drink um, cold brew, and because I'm trying to stay away from sugar, like so much sugar and cream and all of that, uh -huh. because I don't like black coffee. But I love like you can get it from the store, but it's Starbucks's cold brew. Really like it a yeah. lot. And um, it's supposed to be stronger, isn't it? It's strong and it's amazing. I absolutely love it. Um, and then recently I got one that was sweetened with almond milk, but it's still a cold brew. Uh -huh. And I, I bought that, I think, the day before yesterday Oh my or gosh. yesterday. And it, That's it's like really one good. big gulp right there. I, I just so know as soon as I, you'd want to taste that, you're like, okay, let me just keep drinking this yeah. all day long. <laughs> but, but the, like, I can drink coffee and go right to sleep. It doesn't, it's not that that I love about it. It's not that I need it. Oh, right, right. I mean, I guess I do because I'd probably have a headache if, because I drink so much of it. So <laughs> yeah, I probably need it in that respect, but not to like yeah. wake me up. Just more of like the caffeine mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because I'm used to it. But I just so you have such a high tolerance that you could drink a cup of coffee before bed, no problem, huh? Oh, I do it all the time. That's what that, me too. It's so funny. I've got friends who they say, "Oh, I can't even drink like a coke or or drink coffee after 3 p.m. I'll never get to sleep." And I'm going, "Holy cow, that's crazy!" No, I mean I'm I drink on my second pot. Uh, caffeinated <laughs> tea. I drink coffee, and I can go right to sleep. I that's How, definitely not a problem. Uh, what what first got you interested in coffee? Did you have a, a like family member or someone who? Oh yeah? yeah, that's great. And did someone challenge you to drink it, or were you like, give me a cup of coffee? No, I, I just try that. my mama said when I was little, like I would want some out of her cup because <laughs> my parents drink a lot of coffee. Too. Yeah, you and were they, brought up okay. Yeah, and so I just you it's know, in your blood. It's really <laughs> yeah. And a lot of people say, oh, don't give her coffee; it'll stun her growth. I'm like, well, there wasn't chance for me anyway. My dad's five seven and my mom's five three, so. <laughs> I was screwed either way, so give yeah, her coffee. Right, right. But I think that's crap about the stunt in your growth yeah. anyway. But there was no hope for me anyway. So. But I always do blame it on the coffee anyway because I'm short. So I, I blame yeah. it on coffee anyway. I'm like, I just, you know, I drink a lot of coffee and stunts your growth. <laughs> My brother's tall, though. I don't oh, he care. is? Yeah. So he's like, does we he drink coffee, too? We have the same mom and dad, yeah. He, he doesn't drink as much coffee oh. as me, but we, but you know, if one of us could get the height, I'd rather be yeah. the guy than the girl, so. Uh, oh, my gosh. But he's... He's almost six feet. That's incredible. We have the same mom and dad, but he took after my uncles. Well, I was going to say, yeah. So someone you keep going down there and the, you keep following mm -hmm. the tree, and you find both my you brothers find are tall. Do you have any twins in your family? My dad's an identical twin. Wow! Look mm -hmm. what you beamed to my antenna right there. <laughs> Why would I even think to ask that? You're of course your dad's an identical twin. He's an oh identical my god! Twin. I've been getting so many synchronicities. Of course. Okay, <laughs> let's see how many more we can we okay. can find here. Please. Okay, do. so I your, love da this your game. dad is uh, a twin. You're saying? Mm -hmm. Okay, so how many other twins in the family? Like, if you go, how many generations does my, it skip? Would you say? My grandmother's brother. So she had a set of twins, and her brother had a set of twins too. She, oh gosh, and, holy moly. And uh, I think somewhere back, there were 
were twins, but my grandmother and her brother both had a set. And then as of lately, there haven't been any twins. Of course, I don't have any kids, but my brother had kids, no twins. And then my, my, my twin, my daddy's twin, his daughter married an identical twin and they had three boys and oh. twins. So it skips a generation. Oh. So we thought that she would have twins for sure because she married a twin, but she did. So either you or your, well, brother, your brother's obviously still has an opportunity to, you know, should they decide yeah. to have more kids. But, you know, and then his kids might have twins too. Gosh, that I just fascinates that me. Twins. I think twins are awesome. But it's so interesting because they got their own little language. by twins. A lot of people are like, uh-uh, I don't want twins. I'm like, well, you get them out of the way. You get them out of the way. And they yeah. keep each other company and they, they forever yeah. have like a best friend, I feel like. Twins yeah. have a real strong bond. Yeah, because they're, they're, they're telepathic. Even though my daddy and his brother are like two of the biggest assholes on the planet. <laughs> I mean, I love them, but they're assholes, let's be honest. They are at least assholes that get each other. Yeah. So where, where are you from? I'm originally from right near Mobile, Alabama. Wow, that's great. Um, what what uh, brought, what enticed you about this place besides the mountains an, and the ocean? I'm an actress. Oh, so that's great. That's why I moved here. And uh, then, as in the last couple of years, I started teaching yoga sculpt. Um, so I teach like four classes a week. Wait, sculpting and yoga at the same time? It's yoga with weights. So oh, oh, gotcha. It's way gotcha. more of a workout than it is yoga, but it's really awesome. Wow, is that? Did you invent that? No, God, no! I wish I had invented. That sounds like some interesting fusion you just come up with one day. You're like, okay, somebody this did. It wasn't, and it wasn't me. You know. <laughs> I wish I had. I'd be a rich woman. I know. Um, I can't. I should know this, but I. I mean, I studied it, but I can't even remember his name. But it started from power yoga. Hmm. So vinyasa flow. It's a vinyasa flow, and you add on push-ups, squats, cardio, weight, and then yoga poses with weights. So it is a workout for sure. It's insanely hard. Um, of wow. course, to me now, it's like second nature, and I, I do it with them. And holy, I, you know, whatever. holy. Are you a contortionist? Can you, are you very limber? I get this feeling you're probably thrilled, like, zip, 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 real rubbery. I've, I, I've always been limber, but, like, I'm not as crazy as some people are. That I am astonished to like, see what the heck some of these yoga poses yeah. are like. I'm like, what? Well, my, How mine doing is that? much more of a workout than it is oh, yoga. Oh, gotcha. So I can do, I can like outdo men in push-ups and, you know, like lift crazy weights and stuff, but I don't I do, I can do yoga and I am limber, but I don't do some of the crazy yoga mm. poses that you've seen that some people do. Did you ever just invent your own? Just, just to try. Just say, okay, <laughs> no, let's, I have never do. done that. <laughs> it's almost like yoga choreography of some way. You're like, okay, and now we're gonna do I mean, this. that's where poses came from, though. People just yeah, someone had to invent yeah, something at some point, right? Called they invented it and called it something. Yeah. So, but I find it interesting. For so, sure. uh, what What was the first thing that you noticed when you started doing yoga that cha- that altered your perceptions, so to speak? Well. I never loved yoga, be, to be honest. I never was like, oh, this is, I love yoga. But I, because I love to work out. And I thought it was kind of boring for me. It was kind of too slow paced for me. Mm. But when I took yoga sculpt, I was like, now this, because it's a music driven class. It's, oh. It's a music driven class. So the playlists are always really hype like fast paced and really fun and whatever so like the first 15 minutes is real yoga and then you add on the weights and you're you know and I always change up the playlist so it's always really fun I do 80s playlists 70s funk playlists and like so do you ever go out and see live bands by any chance do you ever yeah sometimes this is a this is a band we're playing uh today actually in Big Bear called The Cave we're called Yachtly Crew oh, that's and we cool. sing like, 70s and 80s love songs oh, like cool. Michael McDonald well these I days they call Michael it Yacht Rock McDon- <laughs> Michael McDonald Toto Lionel Richie all those great soft rock classics that you know we all grew up with where and, are you uh, from? well I'm from Chicago originally. Chicago I was gonna I was gonna say Illinois your accent cause I could hear little little like er, little bits of, of your accent popping mm-hmm. through and yeah. uh, it's it always fascinates me to find out where, where, where folks come from so do you have an Instagram or anything? I do. At Shay1. I go by Shay. My name's Tiffany Lachey. And yeah. They won't let me go by Shay. But anyway. Um, it's S-H-E-E-1. That's just, S-H-E-E-1. It's super easy. Tiffany. No. Tiffany. Oh, sh- just Shay. S-H-E-E-1? Yeah. That's my Instagram. That's S-H-E-E-1. awesome. Thank you. 
It's nice cool. to meet you. It was a pleasure meeting you. You have a great I'm, day. You're my neighbor. I live right by you. That's so crazy. That's astounding. Well, Bye. take care and uh, may all your acting dreams come true. Thank you. You're welcome. And your yoga dreams. Hey Kurt, this is Richard Wilson from Mad Shelley Films and we have a message for you. This, this is, is Mad Shelley Films and, and you're listening, listening to Inspirado Projecto Radio. Uh, we are... At the cave. We're at the cave, and at the cave. Looks like there's going to be another. Should be getting something now in some of the years. Did you, uh, you... What do you love? Who do you love? What songs do you love? What music do you love? What video games do you love? What computers do you love? He's the only one, he's the only one. He's the only one, 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 he's the only one. Inspirado Projecto. Terrible. Heard these, uh, I heard these sounds out here behind my apartment complex, and uh, I'm not used to hearing little kids playing in the back. I'm just not used to hearing that. It's, it's a joyful sound. I glanced over the edge. Glanced over the edge, and uh, one of their fathers is uh, grilling up on a grill over there. Which I, I haven't, I, I've only seen it one, happen once. I was involved with it. A grill in the back here. So cool. It's a little backyard, a little backyard for kids. It's great. That's joyful. That's play. Just listen to those kids over the edge. I'm currently holding a rainbow moonstone in my left hand right now. I had a glass of ozonated water today. I put this, uh, I washed this, uh, Rainbow Moonstone. I hear it's good to wash your crystals and also put them in the sun to recharge them. So, I ran, I, I washed this, I put it in the glass, I ozonated the water with 
this rainbow moonstone in there. You know what this does? This, this, this magnetizes synchronicities. So I ozonated this. All the pores, all the pores, they got an extra uh, oxygen molecule. <coughs> H3O. And so then I, I drank the glass with the rainbow moonstone in there going. They just thinking in my brain, okay, I'm drinking synchronicities right now. I'm drinking a purified water, you know, and water has behavior. Water has memories. Water has memories. So I ran, I ran it through the rainbow moonstone. I'm just going to put it out here on the patio and um, let it energize when the sun when the sun hits it. I'll put it right in the sun. Wow. I just cannot get over I love it. Robert Wilson and the gang. They, they make phenomenal movies over there at Mad Shelley Films. Under the flowers, if you get a chance, look for it. The trailer, the series, it's a really cool supernatural. I love the camera work. I love the editing. It is so unique. It's so unapologetic. It's cool. It's like... I can... I... I, I want to see this guy get... I want to see him get funding. I want to see him get funding for more of these things. I want to see that whole crew, cast, all of them. It's amazing. It's, it's got such heart. It's daring. It's experimental. It keeps you on your toes. The series does not spell anything out for you. It gives you smidgens of exposition, which that... To me, that stuff draws me in. That's the stuff. Those are those elements that I love about David Lynch movies, about any of these movies that are out there. That have to do with sort of that uh, showing without telling kind of aspect. You know there's a history there, but y you know it's up to you to fill in the blanks. It's like in uh, Twin Peaks season three when the Baltazar Getty guy, who's uh, the basically the drug dealer of the, uh, what's it called, Sparkle? I think it's called Sparkle. Or Glitter or something. Sparkle, maybe? Sparkle. So the kids are hooked on this drug out there in Twin Peaks. And you end up finding out that one of these drug dealers dudes, who's like this strange m magician kind of otherworldly kind of creature, it's Baltazar Getty from Lost Highway, and he you end up seeing that there's some kind of relationship going on with Shelly and, and this shady drug dealer guy. And then you go, oh, no. What's Shelly gotten into? What is Shelly gotten into? What has she gotten into? And her, you know, and her, her ex-husband uh, or boyfriend or whatever, you know, Bobby is a cop now. So then What? He's got this daughter that's totally messed up. Hooked on the stuff. I mean, God, it's crazy. So there's all these unanswered questions. I love that. I appreciate that. Under the flowers, bam. More questions than answers. And the questions, the, the questions do get answered. In, like, in wisps, it's the only way I can I can describe it. In like, whoosh, here it is. Whoosh, it wisp. It whoosh, it wisps. It it wisps. In there, and it's just a hint, a little drip, little accent. Something you'd see in a Bob Ross painting. The the little the little the little shiny shining giblets of the sun. Just tickling the edges of those of those trees. Just blip. there it is, the accents, the accents, the seasons, the accents, the little the little the little the little hair the little herbs and species. 
spices, species, herbs, and species. Welcome to another episodic of Herbs and Spices. So congratulations to the Mad Shelly gang. I am so fortunate to be helping out with Kapow Intergalactic Film Festival this year. Looking at all these kick-ass movies and perspectives. And the heart and soul that goes into this stuff. You know, folks, just because the latest 10K camera comes out does not mean that if you get it, that's the magic wand that's going to give you phenomenal movies. Shoot whatever you can right now with whatever video recording mechanism you got. If it's a camcorder, pick it up. If you're at a thrift store, you're listening to this on headphones, and you see one of those Pixel 2000s, I think that's what they're called. They ran on cassette tapes. Fisher Price. I actually modeled for that back when I was a child actor. I actually modeled for that. I, I was so ecstatic, I got to use my skateboard in the shot. And it was this, po- it was this like cardboard cutout thing that was in um, Toys R Us stores and anywhere where that Pixel 2000 was sold. And I remember it was a side view of a kid. He's looking through the camera, and then you see one, two, three, or four little frames giving you this idea that those are, you know, what he's recording through the camera. The interesting thing is... The images over there were photos, photographs, you know, giving you the impression, oh, this is what the camera is recording in like the like a little view master kind of thing. And I was on one of them. It was me on a skateboard. One of them, I think, was like trees or something, forest. One of them was something else, maybe the beach. Who knows? I'm, I'm making up stuff at this point. I'm jamming on the what if. It's anybody's guess. I've, I've looked around for this advertisement. Uh... Oh, by the way, any of you who have been following, that that little kid right there, recognize that voice. I think he lives on the first floor here. Uh, If you check out that Instagram photo, it's my persona, Stony Shores, or is it? (laughs) Stony Shores is holding the final Mad Magazine uh, newsstand issue. Now, Mad Magazine, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. They, they let people spread the rumors, people who are on the inside. People spread the rumors that MAD was no longer going to be made. MAD did not comment on any of this Facebook page. No, no, no. There's just silence. Just brilliant. And then out comes this thing saying number nine, number nine, number nine, which features a, a parody of the Western that takes place within the new Quentin Tarantino film, which I have yet to see. I want to see how all that Laurel Canyon stuff fits together so I took a photo <coughs> of, uh, of me wearing the Stony Shores uh, a piece of it holding up the Mad Magazine just like I'd always see in the old Mad Magazines right there in the beginning they'd show these, these celebrities or people would write in you know with them like there was a one with Mark Hamill reading the latest Mad Magazine because they would do parodies it was, it was an honor for Mad Magazine to parody your product it was an honor And Quentin Tarantino recently was on some talk show where he, you know, he urged people to check it out. It's, it's, it's a phenomenal, it teaches you so much about humor. Pick up Mad Magazine. You want to, if you want to, um, teach your kids humor and and like really exposing the ridiculosity of what's going on in society everywhere. I mean, they're equal with this. They're not, it's not, this is not a, a, um, they're not taking sides when it comes to politics. They're making they're just making light of all of it. It's like being a modern day day jester. That's what it is. They're jesters. They're jokers. God, I love Mad Magazine. It's so good, man. And so I took a photo of that. So I, I there's a there's sort of a backdrop. Of course, look how the universe would work that. There's a backdrop down there, outside in the uh, behind the. Uh, it's a pa- you know painted on the wall of basically fish underwater. And I took a picture in front of that. And so I heard this little kid going, hey, hey. And it was that little voice you heard earlier. I heard that little kid saying it outside the, outside the window. So a lot of these movies that I'm seeing through, through Kapow, the screeners, some of it, cinemato- cinematography, 
looks beautiful. I mean, you can tell that's like, whoa, that is a good camera, man. That is. And then the acting will be so non committal. If you want to know about committed acting, look up Andy Kaufman videos. You will understand committed acting. I would also invite you to watch Monty Python. That's committed acting. I would invite you to. <laughs> I, I would invite you to. to uh... So, Andy Kaufman, very committed in his acting. Look up the old Saturday Night Live episodes with Eddie, Mur uh, Eddie Murphy. Uh, Ch Chevy Chazé, Chevy Chazé, John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd. Of course, those guys went on to form the Blues Brothers. They were heavily influenced by Andy Kaufman, who may or may not be alter ego Tony Clifton. Boy, oh boy, you want to see committed acting? Bam, bam. Do not let the ego get the best of you. Do not, do not, do not... Um, I'm not going to tell you what to do. There's so much more of a thrill when you don't know how the magic is done. It's the imagination. It's, it's dipping into that, all, you know, anything can be possible. We're moving more and more in that direction. Media is moving more and more and more and more into that direction. They, that, that absurdity. You're seeing a lot more risk-taking on these shows. These are regarded as dramas, and yet, you know, in addition to that, they're, they're science fiction. OA, OA, they say they canceled it on Netflix. Or did they? It's always a really good thing to, you know, you, you, you pretend you're going to cancel the show. Put out the news, just like with Mad Magazine. Put out the news, the show's getting canceled, everybody gets crazy, tw tweets about it, writes our articles about it, does YouTube videos about it. What a beautiful, beautiful sensation when you think about that. And then, But then guess what? Bam. They announce, bam, it's back out. So I'd like to believe that Tick, for instance, they found a home. And so they're going to be, you know, going on with season three. OA, there are five of these sort of movements that they use throughout the show. Riveting, programming, check it out. And so the idea was, hey, there are five movements. Let there be five seasons at least. It's a very interesting show. It's an interesting show. I've never seen a show where it's from the perspective of someone who was kidnapped... And you're, they're telling the story. You hear na narration, but bam, then you see what's going on in there. And the world just gets bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger, more quantum, more quantum. It's astounding. It's meta. Meta, metaphorical, metaphysical. Metastromical. metastromical language is beautiful language is what you make it and language is always going to be reserved for you being the spellcaster as to how you want to whoop, 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 whoop. sweep it swoosh it swoop it swink it squonk it sklinkity sklank it and on and on and on like a Django Reinhardt riff how beautiful is that when you think about that Django Reinhardt he had like something was wonky with his fingers and he used those three fingers that that worked to create his own style of get to, of playing and then that you know out of necessity out of necessity and then guess what out came gypsy jazz phenomenal music you get a chance listen to gypsy jazz look up django reinhardt d-j-a-n-g-o r-e-i-n-h-a-r-d-t D-J-A-N-G-O-R-E-I-N-D-H-A-R-D-T. Rein, Reinhardt. Reinhardt. Hello, I am Django Reinhardt. Pleasure to you meet you. You do the best you can with what you got. Maddie Shelley Films, they do the best with what they got. I'm not worried about what cameras they're using. I'm too being mystified by the freaking imagination that's billing out right there in front of me. I don't care what cameras they use. <laughs> are you getting angry, Kurt? Who are you shaking your fist at right now, young man? Hello. Hello, Mr. Youngman. Who are you shaking your fist at now, youngman?
Who, who are you shaking your f righteous fist at now, young man? It takes courage to follow through with your vision. And at the same time, you flip that over, it really doesn't take courage at all. It just takes an extension and a willingness to unfold the process in the way it wants to unfold ever since you were a child. <laughs> so those of you who might be parents out there who have children, do not shun their imaginations, please. This is the future of our country, of all the countries that are out there that are listening to this podcast right now. Country is a state of mind. Country is a state of being. Country is a moment to moment. State is a state moment to moment. Cosmos is a moment, moment to moment. <laughs> what kind of cosmos are you conjuring right now, folks? What kind of cosmos did you conjure before you started listening to this? What kind of cosmos are you going to conjure after listening to this? That's the domino effect that's going to reverberate. That's you, baby. That's the that's you. You, you, the letter U. That's Usu right there. That's you that's Usu. You could also say it's Yusu. Yusu. Yusui. Usui. 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 Huh. Usui. Yusu Usui Yusu Usui Yusu Usui. That's exactly what it is. You su was we. What is that? Ubiquitous serendipity, serendipitous ubiquity. Throw out that boomerang. Man behind the machine asked earlier, what do you love? I love collaboration. I love cooperation, the reciprocation, precipitation, subscription. Past future participle. We got a helicopter and an airplane up in the sky at the same time. And who, who knows how many invisible, unvisible, invisible UFOs are up there. UFO, MEFO, WEFO. We're all flying objects. What's the U? What's the we? What's the us? It is. It is? Mm -hmm. It is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. That, what a beautiful response. How is the show? It is. It is? That'd be a cool name for a band, huh? A song? It is. What is it? It is. Is it? What is it? It is. I love Commodore 64. He asked about computers. Commodore 64. Music. What music do you like? I like that collaborative spirit. You can hear the ensemble. I have to, I've talked about this, and I never use this phrase, but I'm going to use it. When I use phrases, and I haven't used, and I'm not even going to give a disclaimer, but this is just a little peek behind the curtain. The Kurt in. Kurt in. That serendipitous thing. Quonk. The Kurt in. Behind Kurt in. Maybe that's what I'll that'll be that'll be one of my stage names. Kurt in. Ooh. Kurt in. Wow, I just had this interesting idea for an inn, a hotel. It's called the Kurt, it's Kurt Inn. And it actually has a curtain around it. Waterproof, weatherproof, bulletproof. Entire curtain. Maybe you cannot see it from the outside, but you can see outside from the inside. And it's a curtain all around the building and you put little solar panel molecules in that curtain so you're adding it just keeps going it just keeps going and then you put in the floors the same stuff that they put in those discotheques out there in Amsterdam where when the people are moving and grooving the people dancing 
people dance and people romancing on the dance floor in Amsterdam. They're, da- they're dancing around, they're bouncing around. Jubbling, jobbling, flibbity flobbling, break dancing, tap dancing, Ted Danson, tap dancing. I wonder if Ted Danson does tap dancing. So while they're out there, they're powering the floor, they're dancing, dancing. And it's powering the floor. It's the electricity. So you get all that included. So the Kurtz Inn, it's like a hotel of sorts. It's got slides. It's got slides. Um, and, oh, you know what? There could be cameras in the slides, too. So that way you can tell, you know, if anyone throws up in there, if anyone, you know, whatever. And, uh, Huh. What if it was like a 360 camera? Okay, so let's say, okay, so imagine this. So instead of an elevator, you got a long slide. And then, uh, it's wide enough for large folks. You know, we'll put a, you know, you got to, got to have some kind of, you can't, I mean, so, you know, you figure out a way to do it, and you just go, all right, down a tunnel, down a tunnel. Maybe a little green light go, you know, put, goes on when it says you can go down. And then in, on the inside, maybe it's like 3D cameras all around. So it's cameras all around, so all those are running at the same time, so you can actually see. Maybe it's a clear tube, huh? Maybe it's clear, it's see-through. Why not make it a ride while you're at it? While it's in the middle, I mean, why not, like... Make it a cool, crazy experience. Sliding on down. Heck, maybe the tube itself. Ooh. Maybe there are projectors, okay? That project on the outside, all around it. They're going simultaneous. And it looks like you're underwater. Or looks like you're flying through the sky. I mean, imagine that kind of ride. A long slide, and you're going down everywhere around. It feels like you're flying through the freaking air, through the sky. Time tunnel portal. That'd be a cool entrance into, like, a if you have a Doctor Who kind of theme park. Maybe you, you enter the TARDIS, and the, you go down into it, and it's a long slide. And bam, it opens it up, and now you're... I don't know. Maybe go through a slide. Maybe it's part. Maybe it's part slide elevator. Could you do that? Slide elevator. You'd have to have some kind of like uh, huge fan or something blown behind you if you're like like a like a pod or something. No, 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 no. It couldn't be a pod. What do they do with the skydiving stuff? Maybe something like that. Like one of those powerful fans that shoots it from the ground and blah, shoots you right up the tube. How where how'd it let you out though? How'd it let you out? Maybe it, it launches you into a room full of uh crash mats. Hmm. So just remember, folks, do the best you can with whatever equipment you got, with the people that you got in your general vicinity. Just, 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 just work together. I love the collaboration, and it's pure ensemble with the Mad Shelley series. We're getting some interesting... You know what's so cool about, about Under the Flowers? It's... If there's a rating I could give it, I would say it's G. It's like G-rated... You can't even say, not you can't say horror, but I mean, it could be horrific, maybe, to a young, young kid, maybe. You know, the, you, but it just, I, there's not really, you know, there aren't, it isn't like, it's, it's a safe, it's a safe, it's a thriller, supernatural thriller. Um, 
things are just coming at you all the time. I mean, when you got like scary looking demon ghosts and, you know, that could, that could scare a kid, but you know, what's, what's great about media. I mean, you know, Mr. Rogers learned about this, uh, uh, Bob Ross, of course, these folks, is that we have the potential of really teaching kids v- values. What do we consider values? I was thinking about this the other day. Values. Okay, what are the values that we want to teach kids? Cooperation is definitely a value. Reciprocation. Collaboration is a value. How cool is that serendipitous moment? universe gave that to us it's a punctuation market saying you know that's something to pay attention to no house has been built without collaboration people had to come together and decide go oh that's the dream someone drew it out and there it is oh there's the house and then they say we're going to make this into a livable space people are gonna have their kids in here they got their own bedroom. Oh, we're going to have our bedroom. We're going to leave a bedroom open for the uh, mother-in-law, perhaps. Oh, and we got a basement for visitors. Well, there's my office down there. Oh, and my workshop is over there, too. So you got all these little... It, it had, that had to come together. That certain concoction. All this stuff. The chair I'm sitting in. All this stuff. I don't even have to go as far down. The, uh, the fake Christmas tree sitting out here on the balcony. All of that comes together because of uh, of collaboration. And, you you know, you're just not, no, you're not going to get quality creations if you don't have folks believing in the vision, dreaming that reality. It's just unexplored territory. There isn't really... The only, the, only, the only time something becomes awkward is when someone determines that it's awkward. The only time something is something is when someone who chooses to give a certain definition to it then makes it that something. And so the other people in the area can choose then to decide whether, yeah, I agree with that definition... Or no, I don't agree with that definition. Or choose to say something or not say something about it. Um, for every word, for every definition that comes about in ways that we're going to describe something, obviously something that's so very, it's because it's very important to us. So we're going to use certain language that reflects how we feel about that particular thing in that particular light. How nice is that when you meet people who have dynamic language? And then they describe their friends in these dynamic ways. And you ask them, how was your day today? And they talk to you about it in such a dynamic way, an incredible way, an astounding way. Ad nauseum, that was the word I was going to use earlier. Ad nauseum. Ad no- that's like adding nausea. Ad nauseum. That sounds like an interesting a- advertising agency ad nauseum what else do I love I love sounds of nature I love watching the birds that fly in the sky and they become this one or this one organism that collaboration man what a what a hypnotic thing imagine that for a channel domino tv just birds moving you know do you have do you have examples of that? Have you seen that? Send us your video. This is Clay from the UK. She, you hear that serendipitous honk? She has a podcast on Anchor. And I don't know if she's making podcasts or not. She sl- claims that she doesn't, but why not just keep podcasting? It's, it's a gift for your future self, for your family to get to know what's going on in your life, for your friends who want to know extra 
parts about you? Would like to see what else what else is there behind the curtain? What else? I know them in this light. I know them around the water cooler at this nine to five job. Oh, let's listen to their podcast. Wow, they're teaching me about technology, huh? Wow, I didn't realize this guy just knows how to build his own computer. Holy cow. That lady has her own coffee company on the side, Yowzer. Holy cow, this dude he is a has is a landscapist and he may, does crazy stuff with bushes like Edward Scissorhands. What? Then you learn this stuff. You become enthralled with it. Isn't it nice when you peel back another layer and you go, another another piece is revealed about someone that you didn't know before? I'm trying to find the balance. I'm saying this out loud to, so you can hold me accountable to it. You, the great you, the, the me, myself, and I are going to keep their watch on you. <laughs> me, myself, and I are going to keep, keep their watch on So, Paulie, what are your thoughts about tonight's show? I thought that it was sailed out at, at, at elevation. Like, we are like a mile high. We're a mile high. Yeah. Are you noticing and, uh, it affecting you any differently? The, yes, the I'm, definitely, I'm definitely uh, short of breath. Oh. All of the rough. After, you know um, now it's like, now I'm after Baker Street tonight, I could barely catch my oh breath. Oh, my God. You know what? I found myself having a crazy uh, out-of-breath experience up on, on stage. Right now. And I didn't even realize it until you mentioned it right now. It's, it's, it's so, I mean, let me see your phone. I have something else to add. Oh, my God. I have something else to add. <laughs> Sorry, this PSA has been brought to you by Polly Shores. <laughs> oh, shit. Emperor. The emperor. So I'm the emperor, right? Oh, so yeah. Big old bone sheet. Oh, yeah. And then I flash people. And there's the Darth Vader. <laughs> it's Darth Spangler. That is great. That is great. That's fucking funny. We got to remember that. I want to, oh, yeah. Well, guess what? We're, I just recorded it. Because I'm trying to, rec- I, I want to make sure, I want to talk to Angela more about doing a soundtrack with all of his crazy instruments. Just purely instrumental um, for, for movies and how much you would charge for something like that. Because, whoa, that would be phenomenal. Also, talk with Angela more about. Uh, collaborating with him and uh, and Dave and just creating, you know, creating, creating stuff uh, with with his crazy instruments. He's got all those different saxophones and all those all that crazy brass. I could only imagine what that would be like if you were just to layer all of those different, all those different uh, those instruments and have him uh, uh, add on to those. And then not to mention the theremin too. That'd be so great because then we could put uh, uh, different um, sound effects on it and stuff too, which which could be phenomenal. Oh yes, oh yes. So you know what? Can you, would you mind if I asked you what uh, what were the elements that were stolen? I just want to get this on for the record. What? What element? What things were stolen? Oh, we've had merchandise stolen. We've had our two this foot. This is Misty Harbors, by the way. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, We've yes. had our two-foot representative flamingo stolen, and I've had personal attire stolen. I've had my virginity stolen. Right there at the merch Just booth. The right there at the merch booth. Just All kinds of things it. are being stolen at the merch Hold booth, left and right. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Sorry, I didn't mean to step on you. It must be cold because the mountains are blue. So those are all the all the things that our friendly yacht. I mean, crew... that's just what we know of. Right. Oh, and Dave's tambourine. Oh, that was the one girl the flashed. Tambourine. She flashed us while our friend. It was like classic misdirection. The one gal flashed us. Other other gal came up and stole the tambourine. <sighs> Someone's probably still in the hat at some point too. Oh, oh yeah. I think. Hey, yeah, honestly, story. if I put up. Everything I did in Burbank. Table, table, table. Merch, merch, and flamingo. If the fucking flamingo was ripped off, 
Yeah. There was merch stolen. Oh, for sure. Because that's gutsy. That's really courageous to no, steal like, that right there. Yeah. I mean, because it's, it's such an up. it's such an element of the whole thing. <laughs> to take that. Because <laughs> eventually their ego is going to get the best of them, and they're going to start telling stories. And that's the thing. It all it always comes back. back it's like a domino effect. Yes. It's going to come through here, and then Whoa. it's all. It's gonna, gonna get gonna caught. bite you in the booty hole. That's right. That's right. You're gonna wake up in the middle of the night, and then we'll have the, uh, you know, Yatley Cruz most wanted <laughs> wall of all the faces. Like we caught you on the cameras, on Chaz's secret cameras. Right ear was ringing so bad. Why? What happened? Because your ear was ringing from. Uh, yeah, his last hearing. Ah. Oh my gosh. Crack. You're on the high end. All right, all right, I'll, I'll start playing on electric drum set with brushes. What do you want? Did you see that guy's drum set before us? He had like electric <laughs> Hit electric and acoustic. Yeah, well, that's what, what? That's what Danny Carey. Danny Carey plays a 50-50 kit too. Yeah, really? but you know what? So oh, I'll yeah. put everything on Sammy. And I'm well, and check. some of it might have been AI play. too. Oh Tech yeah, Street. the Bachelorettes. Yeah. Chris used to touch Cougar Club. That's what it was. Yeah. CC. <laughs> CC. <laughs> Taylor Hawkins' sister is sitting right beside me. Uh -huh. I recognize her. Taylor Hawkins from the Foo Fighters. Yeah. Sister was there. And you just made a Foo Fighters reference earlier today. Well, I'm fucking Sailor Hawkins. Yeah, yeah, and that, so you tie all that together, man. And then Chris oh, what did I say about Foo Fighters? Oh, that's funny, I did. And then Chris, Chris told her the drummer's name in the band Sailor is Sailor Hawkins, and she, he said that she just busted up. Yeah, because he told me the story. he was looking at her, and he, he was like, I was trying to figure it out. And he man. Goes, he goes, she goes, what are you looking at? So he goes, you look familiar. I'm trying to. She goes, oh, you ever heard of Vancouver? Chevy Metal Orphan. And she goes, or Chris goes, yeah, of course. Let Dave Gold come up and play. I heard this conversation. I know. I know. He goes, my buddy does their sound, and I know. 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 I the drummer for the Out Rock band tonight is named Sailor Hawkins. <laughs> and she started fucking ball, like rolling. Now we need to dump that beer. Damn. Tommy, you're out. I'm out for the beer. Tommy's, beer. Tommy's out, out for the out. count. That's it. It's uh, the 11th. Just played a private gig, Newport Beach Yacht Club. Yacht crew just played. This is our third gig in in three days. Um, and uh, so we just played for the for these insurance folks, and now we're gonna be breaking stuff down. Here's Robin. Let's see if you can hear Robin. He was super into it. He was like. He's from the East Coast. Like, he's like, like, like Philly. No. No, white. Oh, I met that guy from Philly. I don't know. Was he from Philly? I met a man from Philly. Did you get to talk to JJ from Chicago? No. Oh. Hey, I wish. About, <laughs> hey, what about Tony from New York, huh? <laughs> what about Tony from New York? Tony was fucking pissed because he didn't see you. <laughs> believe me, you're going to hear about it tomorrow. You're hear about it tomorrow. This is a beautiful, like beautiful. A fucking nasty message on his voice machine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to break this stuff down. We're, we're going to talk more. We're going to talk more later. Hey, Kurt, this is Richard Wilson from Mad Shelley Films, and we have a message for you. This, this is, is Mad Shelley Films, and, and you're, you're listening, listening to Inspirado Projecto Radio. Radio.